Hey Redux Rebels, it's your favorite twins. I'm Viper. And I'm Monkey. And it's time for another, another exciting episode of Rebel Hour. On today's episode, we're talking about Once Upon a Time, which premieres Sunday, that's tomorrow, September 28th at 8, 7 central. The theme of the show is supposed to be never give up on the people that you love. How do we think that this theme is going to play into the shows and the characters that are premiering? We have Elsa and Anna and Olaf. Well, we wish we had Olaf. Hans, how is that? Well, I think it's going to be a really interesting season just because there's so many different characters and so many different relationships that all the different people are going to be battling with each other to. Um, it's on this side. So, oh, I'm trying to find this coffee. Yep, that makes it a good coffee. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. There we go. Anyway, there's so many different relationships mm-hmm. in the show that there's going to be no end to exploring this thing. You have the dynamic between um, Emma and her son and Regina. Regina and her son, and then Emma and Hook, and then Snow and Chani. There's just so many different relationships that you're going to get a lot of content, I guess, on this thing. And they're not going to want to get up on the very well, so it's not like there's some of the difficulties in their relationships they're going to have to overcome. And they've been hinted at by Kipsis and Corwood that they're all going to have these issues. Particularly mm-hmm. Regina trying to keep her son, um, be happy with him and try and win Robin back from Marion. You never know what kind of extra she's going to go to keep him. So definitely not going to want to give up on her. She's not going to want to give up her bad side and she's not going to want to lose her son or her. So, speaking of going to the bad side, we've seen the little sneak peek teasers where she goes and she releases glass from what we now know is like a temporary insane asylum where she puts the people that she doesn't want anybody to know about. How do you think that that's going to play into everything? Because she got rid of them. At the end of what the mayoral campaign, whenever he kind of failed to get everything, he thought she got rid she of him. Thought Apparently, him. she just hid him away in the same place she fell away. <laughs> yeah. So I think she could go because that the promo kind of hints that she's trying to get rid of one and several different kinds of people, and it's kind of up in the air. Who she's trying to get rid of at that moment because you never know who. Is on is it is that side. It, it could be her trying to get rid of Marianne at that moment, or she could be trying to get rid of um, Elsa at that moment because Elsa's the new queen being in town, and she's gonna be the new queen being, and I'm gonna be combative against her and trying to figure out who it is, who she is, and what it is she wants, and why she's in town, and how she got in town. And then not only that, we've got this whole Snow Queen thing going on. So it's, it's not just going to be two people and get two queens. It's going to be a battle between three queens clearly. And so depending on what point in the season it occurs and who exactly she's talking about, we don't know. It goes in way. But clearly, even despite all the things that she put him through, then Glass is still 100% Devoted to her, and so mm-hmm. well, that kind of sucks for him too because she she kind of tricked him into that position. She comes to me and yeah. over and over and over and walks him away. It's just like, it's like putting it's putting me. Some, <laughs> well, I was gonna say it, it <laughs> made it and it comes back. It's literally like talking to a mirror because whenever you look in a mirror, it you see oh. It's, I see how pretty I am and how nice I am. And this person that's trying to see me loves me. And whenever I don't want to hear how pretty I am, I just look at 
way, <laughs> kind of. Um, but how do you think that Regina is going to deal with Emma? Because I think that's going to be really <laughs> interesting because she kind of is going to screw her over with all Mary. Well, I know like, I was reading an article about how there was one episode completely devoted to them and their relationship and how they deal with the things that go on, not only is there the dynamic between the children and their son, but there's also the dynamic of in the brain marrying back in the past, and now she's alive, and Regina has to deal with that. Um, Emma destroyed her happy ending, just like her mother, Snow, destroyed her happy ending with her previous boyfriend. Then, you know, it's going to be an interesting dynamic between the two of them trying to work around their issues and Regina not trying to do that and try and keep her boo, her new boo, her new her son. So. Or you mentioned Henry. Apparently Henry and Regina are supposed to go on some kind of adventure and I'm wondering what kind of adventure this is going to be. I wonder if they're going to be searching for some item or they're gonna go ice skating. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's gonna be the big adventure, right, kids? Yeah. <laughs> something small, something family friendly. I don't know. There's also a debate on whether Emma is actually in love with her. And we know that he's actually head of the hills in love with her. And yeah, she did give up her powers so that he wouldn't die, but that doesn't necessarily equate to love. It, it would equate to someone as being a woman that is just not wanting to lose the one thing that they're not like that makes them look. I'm yeah. like, don't you? Oh, oh, oh. Not in your head. It's a curd. But maybe it would. Mm -hmm. But maybe it could. Anyway, so like, you just don't want to lose that hook that makes you feel anchored, haha, -ha, <laughs> to <laughs> the world. So. She could think she's in love with him, but who knows? Um, I think it's kind of still up in the air, and she hasn't. She's thought about it, but she hasn't really explored how she feels about it yet. So we also have this dynamic with um, Belle and Rumpel talking about when we're talking about a strained relationship. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like it's strained on the outside, but on the inside, you know that it is because Rumpel's having a big secret. So we know what she doesn't know. Yeah, we know that what she doesn't know. So we feel the other tension. Like, when is she going to find out? How soon is she going to find out? What is she going to do when she finds out? Because I can't um, I can't imagine Belle getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I don't think it'll be in the first two episodes. I don't think she'll find out. Like, they're going to give Marble Silk and Angel the chance to have like a happy ending, honeymoon period, and they're going to give us the chance to enjoy it before they completely ruin it for them. And um, so I think this is one of those relationships the audience and fans have been looking forward to for a really long time. That they just want to see Marble Silk and happy, and Belle is sad, and they just want time to enjoy it. I have a question. <laughs> Where are they going on their honeymoon? Because I don't, I don't know if they establish whether or not they can freely cross the border or not. I doubt it. I wonder if they still have to have those charms because I know that Rumpel has that scarf thing that he wore. They're gonna go ice skating. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of everything. Ice skating. No, I, I really wonder where they're gonna, gonna go. Magic mountain, and they're gonna ride the roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe they're, they're reading all of Disney to Storybook. There's some Ica somewhere on the mountain that we didn't know the name, right? No, oh, they're going to go to the tunnel and they're going to ride their little dynamite. The dynamite. <laughs> well, we know that there's a baby. Um, the actors actually just had their own time. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, but. Jennifer and Dow could play Charming and Snow, and they have a baby not only in real life, but in the show as well. It's going to be the same baby. <laughs> no. It's not a doll. It's real. No. Um, 
Josh Jones has already said that we will not see their child play baby meal. So, mm -hmm. um, but they are going to have a lot of baby problems apparently. And Mary Margaret, you know what? Like, I think I think she's going to have a lot of problems with this because she's never really been a mother. She's known that she is a mother and she has a daughter, but she never really got to raise her. So I think it's going to be an interesting thing for her. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to have all of those. Looking house in the middle of the night, and just coming to where she takes the other and goes through. And, oh, uh, yeah, because if you watch, <laughs> watch the interview with Josh Jones, he's like, Oh, we haven't slept for six, or we haven't slept for oh, so many months. I want to mm -hmm. say he said six months, but I don't, I don't know. It's been a while since they've slept. But we're also supposed to learn more about Charming's past. And I'm wondering if the town is going to find out he's really not pretty <laughs> and what they're going to do with that. Maybe, but I don't think it'll matter. I don't think it'll matter. Oh, people will be like, oh my gosh, it's not you. You're not the real guy I was listening to you. Mm -hmm. But then in the end, he's going to be that courageous guy and I save the town. And they're going to say, oh, sorry. I wonder if him being and it's not gonna matter because you know White is like the fairest loved of all and so because she loves him the town's like <laughs> <laughs> Well, kinda of going with that she technically she's I guess princess queen, whatever. I wonder if her being the princess slash the queen has, will have any bearing on how they treat him because in him not being loyalty and her being loyalty well, is it established like that he is loyalty like that is his brother that's established right that that is his brother that killed that killed because that is the prince and they were what, separated at birth so that there wouldn't be um, throne issues <laughs> right that's what happened right. The issue, um, the I episode they where they went to kill the dragon. Yeah, I think they were twins and they stole the one twin. Honestly, I can't remember. No, <laughs> they're both, they're gonna find out that he's not the the prince, and we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna. Um, uh, there's just some. I was reading so there's this huh? dynamic, dynamic relationship. There's some sort of relationship. Oh, we're assuming blood relationship between the prince and Elko. So it's going to be fun and interesting to figure out what that is. Oh, well, we know how Elsa got to Storybrook, but I'm curious about how Anna is going to get there and how uh, Hans is going to get there and Kristoff's going to get there because all the things I've read hint that they're all in Storybrook, but you don't really know how to go there. <laughs> so that's going to be interesting. And the um, whole thing that we're talking about, we're going to find out how they explore new worlds now because um, magic beings don't exist anymore in our world. And so we don't have any kind of sort of portals mm -hmm. that can be created. And so we're going to figure out a new way to travel between worlds. Um, that's going to be fun. It's going to be Snow Castle. <laughs> ice skating. They're going to fall through ice. <laughs> the fountain of heat. Oh, I doubt that. But, um, apparently, apparently, we're also going to find out how Hansel got Elsa in an urn, which is very genie like. Like, gives all the Wonderland by women who couldn't But <laughs> Elsa and Emma are supposed to have an interesting friendship type relationship, according to rumors. Apparently, because they both have magic powers and they're not really understood and they don't really know how to control their abilities, that's going to come into play for them. And then how Anna and Hans treat each other after the movie, because these the most common times before happens after the events of the movie. So I'm interested to see how these 
Secret Exit. Yeah. No, 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 Hans. <laughs> I'm talking about Hans. How can we see X very short time X? How them being exes for a very short amount of time like affects their relationship? Because Hans manipulated everybody and tried to get Elsa to kill Anna and then that failed and he's trying to get Anna to say that it was okay to kill Elsa and that failed and he tried to kill Elsa and then failed and but the last time we saw him they were hauling him off to jail so that is going to be one tricky thing to find out I mean does he get pardoned like what exactly happens there and does, does this 13 all the brothers come and like pull him out of jail I mean, so there's also another queen, an ice queen that is supposed to be coming, who's supposed to be the court official over the first half of the season. Not Elsa. Yeah. Not Elsa. Not really Elsa. It's a new Elsa. It's a different queen. It was based more on the original story by Elsa. And that's going to be really unique because now you have two people with the same abilities out there in the open. And that's going to generate fear. It's going to be entertaining. It's going to be a witch hunt. Yeah. Pitch -play. But who do we want to be? I know we want to be Olaf, but they said Olaf's not going to be there. But they're going to make an ode to him. Uh, do you oh. want to build a snowman? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> who else do we want to see? I would like to see the name of Russell. Legal thing. I think it's going to snow in Storybrook because Storybrook mm -hmm. is like up in the north. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's got to go there, name, no, I'm not in Texas, <laughs> and they're going to build a lot, which is going to come to life. I didn't know they're going to make their own and they're going to sing a song to show he made it to let the person cry. Um, as far as musicals go, they've already said that they're not doing the musical. Well, no, I mean, like, <laughs> you know, when you sing lullabies or whatever, like, yeah. when People are in the shower. People are in the shower and some things, and they're like humming in the shower or whatever. It's kind of hum. like they're walking out and they're starting to build snowman and they're going to hum the tune. Which is like, yeah, so. I don't know. Horace and his kid have said that they would like to do a musical, but that one of them just one of the But they, they don't want to glee fanatic out of the way. <laughs> They uh, because they don't have a lot of experience with it, even though they have a lot of voice talent, they would love to do it. They just have to figure it out. <laughs> but other people that I would like to see is the mayor of Buckingham. Flash from the It would be funny. They have like, like a short, healthy. lanky guy. They should get the um, Astro Wolf guy. <laughs> like <laughs> guy. The actual look at um, Mr. Bud. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, somebody like that. Somebody like that. Somebody like that. <laughs> but for the second half of the season, the villain is supposed to be in the book of I've seen that rumored. I don't know to which one of the case to be a full season villain. Mm -hmm. Unless the season is going to be more about. Aurora and her friends versus Emma and their storyline. Well, we never found out what happened to Aurora and her prince and their unborn child after the Wicked Witch. Well, when you go back a little bit, they, for us and people, mm -hmm. need to go back a little bit and explain what happened once, um, I think Snow and Emma leave the Enchanted Forest because they get transported there and then, um, 
that they find out that their kingdom has been really taken over by like giants and stuff. Not giants. Trolls. 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 They, they're forced to be taken over again by evil creatures and the people are trying to rise up and reclaim their kingdom from evil things. And um and so we never find out how Mulan and the war get their prince out of his sleep or death rebirth. He can't get a prince because Mulan is gay. Mulan is gay. He misunderstood the prince. Okay, our role is prince. It's because Mulan will have war with Mulan. Oh, why she helps her get her prince back. I don't know, there could be enough of a story that we're seeing this too, but, but I don't think it will be more about Maleficent as it will be about Mulan and her relationship with Zora and their friends and Emma and his involvement in it. But at this point, we have a behind the scenes look at their costume that comes from inside we're going to share our screen with you guys my name is eduardo castro and i'm the costume designer on once upon a time and this is my little domain where we start the process of designing the costumes I'm going to show you uh, the workrooms and the storage areas and where more of the magic happens. This is the fabric that uh, Elsa's dress is made out of. It is a silk imported from uh, Europe with uh, Austrian crystals and the cape was done on some sheer fabric and then we used a process called sublimation printing and as you can tell there's snowflakes uh, printed onto it and then on top of the whole thing you'll see tiny little Swarovski crystals imported from Austria. This is the heaviest thing we've ever made. This is Captain Hook's jacket. This costume has, uh, number one, it's Italian leather. Then it's got the imported buttons here. Then this is like uh, a quilted fabric that we found in Los Angeles. This is Elsa in her coronation costume and uh, a lot of embroidery and we try to stay as true to the iconic film design which was very difficult but we did it and back here you'll see a skirt for uh, Anna this is Anna's skirt but I'll tell you the secret it's this is how it's made it is one big long flat piece then it's gathered and it's what we call a dirndl skirt so then it's gathered to like a 24 inch waist, so they're very, very tiny. I'm gonna take you to the area where you'll see a lot of recognizable costumes, and that is back here. This was Emma's ball gown, actually, that she wore. It was one of the few ball gowns that she, it's only had two ball gowns. This is the gray one that she wore in a dream sequence. And this is the red ball gown that she wore last year. Uh, it's a single ball gown and over here everything from this point all the way down is snow white here's the famous bandit costume that took many many hours to, to, to it's like 16 pieces of suede different suede and fur and it's intricately made this side we have Regina and this is ah uh, Regina's going to war costume which was chain mailed and again black leather all Austrian crystals, all channeled, uh, lots of hours, chain mail here. Uh, the amount of time that it takes to do these is, is quite incredible. Then if you come over here, down here, this is Belle. Here's a sneak peek of what uh, she's gonna wear in the first episode. It is uh, a ball gown, her classic yellow ball gown. This is Bell Adventure costume and it is tapestry and leather and linen and just the work involved and it's laced up and it's super tight and this is one of my favorite costumes we've ever done just to finish off this is Robin Hood so Robin Hood is all green leather and it's all studded 
and it's got the, bla the, 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 the trim, the suede, and if you look at the back, how beautifully they match up. It's a lot of work. It just keeps us very busy and there's never a dull moment. I thought they were absolutely beautiful. <laughs> they were. A lot of A lot of detail. <clears throat> just in those crystals. Every, almost everything was imported. Like the Italian leather, the crystals, and the dress. Just beautiful. Amazing, amazing, amazing detail. You see the quality. You know, it takes a long time to make that stuff. And just how heavy this stuff is. He's like, oh, this is oh, her going to wear an outfit. Mm -hmm. Just imagine being Juana Korea and having to wear that. Yeah. Like, that's heavy. All that chain now for eight hours. <laughs> yeah, all day. It's sometimes outside, depending mm -hmm. on the weather. It could be hot as a desert or chilly as ice. I feel we also have a more close up sneak peek of just Elsa and on the So that gives you like a more in-depth look at their costumes. You can you have a close-up on it. And you can see all the little details they put into it, and then it swaps these crystals that are sewn on to the dress. And <coughs> even like the embroidery on on a vest, the corset thing. You can see all the detail that went into it, and it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to put this thing, bring it to life, and then lie down to the cinema for us. Peon to wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be really exciting to see the different costumes that they go through. Hopefully, they won't stay in the same stuff. You'll get to see more costumes from the movie, just the one piece. So, I have a question. Like, is that the same dress that she, it's not the same dress that she wore at the end of season three? This is a lighter blue. It has all the sublimation and it has this lot of crystals. We only saw the back of the other one. But whenever you compare this one, this one just seems you look at it and it's lighter and it's the light blue. So we know that whenever you look at the blue rose oil like in America, at least here, blue is a very loyal and trustworthy color. And that the lighter it is, the more free it is. Mm -hmm. And Elsa being pinned up all of her life, now the silhouette is really long to come on, especially for degree, mm -hmm. and everyone gets confusing. But do we wish her shoes were kind of classy, kind of crystal, icy? They're solid, they're not transparent. Um, I think if they were too transparent, they'd be romance and it's so vanilla, and they couldn't really do that. And I'm don't have shoe girls, I didn't pay attention to her shoes as like an enemy, so I'm sure it's some sort of take on the movie and it didn't go too far with her shoes, so. Which is in a Cinderella live action movie coming out soon, which we'll have more details on that later. <laughs> but we're gonna move on and do officially announce via podcast that our winner for the cosplay is War Prepper Contest by, by Liber um, Liber Tribes. Yeah, well, that's just what it says, but it's, um, I forget what the name is. It's um, by Liber Labellula. Is her um, sweatshirt? <laughs> yes, I apologize. That's in the first video. I'm it. I think.
I'm so sorry. And I know that that's not your real name. This is the deviant art name. But we're going to screen share um, what it looks like for you guys. And this, this is the winner. It's a Warcraft meets Disney. So it's Warcraft with the Haunted. And if you watch the first video, you'll know that this was more than a cosplay contest. This was a, a live style contest um, because I will be um, going on a certain nutrition diet and I will also be exercising. As part of the exercise, today I went to rowing. So I was like, oh, first scene of Pocahontas, they're on a boat, they're rowing, going down the river and all Just that. So that's what I did for today's activity, but we're going to start with anything. It's going to be fun, and we're going to make costumes. It's going to be beautiful, and we're going to honor the design. And it's going to be worn at Comic Palooza in this coming year, 2015. It happens Memorial Day weekend. Now we're going to talk about what's in store for. The so much guys truly I'm very grateful I've been waiting for hours no kidding you look like you crawled out of a cemetery it smells like it too open a window back there <laughs> there you go yeah. yes thank you forgive me I am somewhat disheveled the temporary setback I assure you well, thank you so much what the hell happened to you anyhow it was my own fault foolish arrogance led me astray but I learned my lessons. I'll be back. Stronger and smarter than ever. Good luck with that, bro. Here I am riding around in a lovely truck, sharing an ice cold beer with my new friends. My luck's already turned, right? <laughs> Dude, anyone ever tell you, when you walk, you look just like a penguin. <laughs> no, nobody's ever told me that. Okay, so I have to say that Taylor Taylor is my most favorite actor on the show so far, and the probably only reason why I'm coming back to watch the second episode. Um, if you haven't seen our other videos off the review, I saw the scripting, and a lot of the acting was incredibly cheesy, except for with Robin and Taylor, he fully commits to his performance. Everything on here does a really great job, and it's reminiscent in a way, like he's looking at all future images of um, um, the Disney show and um, portrayal in my um, I don't know I can't wait to see him and then comment on him. You can see how disillusioned, easily disillusioned he is because when the guys are messing with him and he's trying to get in, he goes to get in and pull up a little bit and they're laughing at him and they do it two or three times and he gets mad and you can see the look on his face. But the moment he gets in, he's like, oh, thank you. And I'm so grateful. And so you can see, I'm sharing a view with my new friend, my little turned around already. He's like, he really disillusioned himself into believing that he's lucky and he has friends and stuff. And then they call him and then he kind of gets aggressive and gets me. So I think it's like all part of his character. But as far as the character, how you play from your gifts, different and your easy boot, the rooted in your character. It's getting to that point where you can tell that he's had enough. It's very early in the season, but you can already tell that he 
he sticks in the frozen pieces of his mess. I mean, he's already killed a fisherman. He doesn't, he can't tell the difference between people who are friends and people who are in the same point of the same condition. Yeah, everyone's just, everyone did that. Yeah, everybody's done that. Uh, it's kind of sad though for him when if he would just relax just a little bit and realize that people were joking, then. Maybe he thought that he had to do so terrible, like he wouldn't be an arms gallery. But in one of the upcoming episodes, we're supposed to get to meet his mother. So maybe when we meet her, we'll figure out why he can't relax. Maybe it has something to do with the parenting style. Speaking of parenting styles, we have another teenager. It's going to be Lee Kyle. Parenting. Parenting issues. She's in juvie in this little, or she's headed to juvie in this little snapshot that we have for you guys. For those who do not know, the next episode, episode two of Gotham will be primarily about Lee Kyle and what she's going through and her origin story. Name? Ma'am, there's been a mistake. I'm not meant to go upstate. I need to talk to James Gordon. He's a cop. You'll be allowed a phone call when you get upstate. Name? I need to talk to him now. He'll thank you for it. Not happening. Name? Bite me, pig arena. Jane Doe. kid. Tubi's not so bad. First week, whatever you do, don't make friends with anyone that's friendly. When we get into a fight, go for their eyes. Okay, so this is the first time that we actually get to see Cameron the Condova actually say anything. Because in the first episode, she didn't say anything. We just saw mm -hmm. her jumping across the rooftop and you know, saying, no, going, going to a funeral, witnessing murders, that kind of thing. And so, in this clip, we see her, she's on her way to do the we wonder, I'm wondering, at least, does she do something dumb and steal something from one manner, or does she steal something from somebody else? I think that long ago, from all the time, yeah. <laughs> she didn't put it all the way back in, but she goes all the way back in. And kind of obvious that something may something's going to happen with that lock. If someone's going to like take it out from someone else and be stolen, if he's actually going to do it, and maybe let's play it. Clue Gordon Bynes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, but like maybe this is where she gets her started with the like trying to steal something down from him. Maybe. Yeah. Well, we already saw in the first episode that she's a street urchin. She successfully stole milk. She failed at stealing the wallet. She Um, but I think that she stole it. She got, she kind of got caught. Yeah, she. You can tell that she's that teenager. She's not disillusioned like Penguin. She knows exactly what she's doing. She knows exactly what she's gotten herself into, and she knows how tough the street can be. But you can tell that she's not cat. Cat girl. She was cat girl. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I don't feel like she's cat yet. And that actually gives us room to grow. We get to we actually get to know things about her. And we'll actually get to see what made her tick. Because we know what made Bruce tick. His parents died. But no one really knows what made so we have that. Who else do we want to see more of besides Robin Hood? I don't think much. I wasn't much. Just because I have more than curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> more <than> curiosity. <laughs> so 
he was very, his position was very brief and very annoying. We got it. Thank you. That he's Edward Nigma. Yeah. <laughs> but he was so annoying that I liked him. So. Well, they showed us Ivy, and Ivy kind of seems like she's a wall hugging plant girl, not like bark plant, but just. I'm gonna stick my face in a plant and hope that nobody sees me. But when people look my way, I'm gonna say what my mom said. Mm -hmm. um, we know that um, her dad got killed. And she witnessed the cops chasing him, and then she knows that he got killed. So I wonder how knowing that her father was framed by the police and then having him killed by the police is gonna change her. Um, I think it's gonna make her. Have no patience with the cops, period, but it's already to call and not give me the fact that she probably didn't have this idea for you to protect you either. So mm -hmm. um, it's not going to even set her on that bigger path of being evil. But um, her and her friend, the producers and the director of the show, said they didn't want, they wanted to be confusing as. Who was good and who was bad in the show? Um, the first one he starts out good and he turns out and he's bad and he turns out to be a hero. So mm -hmm. I think he made off the fact that he did things. I guess first he's going to be good and then he turns out to be a bad egg. And then he's going But that's all I'm waiting for that girl. Waiting for that girl. girl. So I don't know. It's a really long one. Mm -hmm. Ew. But that's all we have today. Um, we are going to leave you with one more video. It's for contest for all you Frozen fans out there. It's a Frozen Sing Your Heart Out contest. Um, you can submit your version of let it go okay so there is no purchase necessary um it is valid through up 50 states and the district of columbia you have to have your entries turned into disney.com slash um by 11 59 p.m on monday that's the 29th um, good luck to everyone who entered We'll be watching to see who wins. And you can go to our website for the official rules. It's not the official rules, but you can go and get more information about the competition on our website. Um, thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Have a great time. Bye. -bye.